Well, the first thing we have to do is remove all of the push button switches on this device since they go bad after a number of years. It's not hard to do. Basically, you just suck the solder out of the holes and then pull them out. What happens to these switches is they either won't stay in or when you do push them in, they don't make contact inside. So you don't get the effect that you were expecting. Anyway, now the solder's all sucked out, and that's what they look like when they're ready to be removed. Okay. All right, this is how you take off these uh, little capacitors. This particular box has all of the capacitors, the 4.7 non-polarized, are bad. So I'll show you how you get these off. Here I've got a, a desoldering tool for service mount devices. Basically all you have to do is heat them up um, until they come off. So we'll do that. I got mine set at about 250 degrees Celsius, which is high. But these are big parts. These aren't little parts. Um, the little parts will come off with a lot less temperature. And this is an old mic processor. And the solder is not the easiest in the world to melt. I've tested all of these guys many times before. That's how you get it off, right there. So, we'll test it just for the fun of it. And uh, I can guarantee you, this is going to be a high ESR. Things hot. Okay, one and three. So that's uh, the two black red ones. So hold it down there. One four K. That's 140 ohms. That little guy is worthless. All right. So now what you do? You take your high-powered soldering iron and you get the clean off the pad if you have to, which in this case I do because it's got to be flat. You get out another one. They come on these little strips like this. Get out another one of these guys. You have this stuff, which is just solid solder flux. And you just put a teensy bit. I don't know if you can get it out of there. There we go. That's way too much. Just a teensy bit of solder flux on there. Okay. That's way too much. Okay. And a little bit of solder paste. does not take much. As a matter of fact, you don't, you don't want much because what will happen, if you notice, those pads on there are really close together. And you'll short that thing out. All right, these particular ones, even those, the, these are non-polarized, which means that they don't have a plus and minus. They are marked with the, uh, the direction of the thing. Yeah, right tools help. So you take 
mark it. There's a flat side on there. I don't know if you can see it or not. But you go by the flat side here. Get it as close as you can. There. <coughs> and you have to have your fan blowing at a very, very low rate for this. <coughs> I hope you be able to see this. But when you heat it up, the solder will just whoops. Like I said, you gotta have your fan blowing at a very low rate. The solder just flows. And the solder will flow right underneath it and you can see it happen. It just goes all of a sudden it just goes whoosh. And you just very carefully remove your whatever you're holding it down with and it should be done then you take your meter because I'll tell you there's nothing quite as nice as finding out that you've shorted one of these underneath there where the solder has flowed together put your meter on test diode test and test both sides of it nothing there's a good one. So, so wash and repeat. That one's on there. That's good. We'll do the rest of them. There's like 13 on here. Most all of these, this particular capacitor has given me fits. If you look at it, if you can see it here, this one is a power capacitor. It's um, for filtering. And see this lead, how thick it is? comes down here to this side of this capacitor the other side of the capacitor goes right up to this pin on this IC and if you look if you can see it there's almost no room between there so what happens is it ends up shorting out let's see if we can do this first time it did it to me drove me nuts but I've learned since <laughs> the right way to do it is to check them that's why I check them all when I'm done with them with an ohmmeter being very careful in the amount of solder I'm putting on there so get me a little little guy here make sure it's right way around although since they're non-polarized it probably would not make any difference drop her down on there if you'll notice that these are very very close to other components also so yes it's going to melt the solder around the other components that are holding on those resistors right there but if your force of your air is low enough it's not going to make any difference so we're gonna you won't blow them off the pads if your force of your air is too high you will blow them right off the pads and you'll have to put them back on there I saw it just jump onto the pin give it a little bit of extra here let's see how we did I'm not sure all right this does take a steady hand that's for sure here we go test this side It didn't. Yay! Got this one right the first time. All right. So, okay, there we go. Uh, 13 capacitors, five switches. That blue capacitor there that you see, right there, that doesn't look like the rest, was a 
previous repair that I did on this thing, um, when one of them was bad and I knew it, uh, it went right over, right over to that one there. Um, and uh, I didn't have the ability to replace these little SMD parts. I have already replaced, uh, about a year ago, the big capacitors that are on here. Uh, those are all filter caps, and uh, those have all been done. So this is the kind of stuff that you have to do for real electronics work. It's not always fixing things. Sometimes it's just making things work by replacing parts that you know are bad and uh, keep them going for another whatever time they need to be in service. Okay, now we have to test this thing to make sure that it works. Uh, the lights over on the right there are output. Uh, you can see they're all lit, except for that last one, which is red, which means overload. And the purpose of this device is to make people sound better on microphone by compressing and de-essing and expanding and you know, all the stuff you need to make people sound better. <clears throat> I'm feeding them with that which is a old but very valuable piece of equipment. Uh, I'm feeding it zero level at this point right now, which means uh, it's uh, high enough to come in because we use line level, not mic level on these things. Uh, and what, what we do is, to check it, you turn up the compressor, which would be this one here, and see if the lights come on on the compressor at a certain point and they are not oh there they go so the compressor turning up the compressor threshold at zero level makes the lights come on and it makes those lights go down so it's compressing what's coming into it um, because of the level of the input and then we check the de-esser which is over uh, here <laughs> where is it it's interesting to try to do this when you're looking through a phone um, so the de-esser is working at a particular level and the de-esser has to be turned up quite a bit because I am only putting in right now 40 times 10 which is 400 so that wouldn't be a lot of a uh, lot of high frequency so the de-esser would have to go up pretty high because what that does is gets rid of the sibilance or the s that n annoying little sound that you hear people make um, and the compressor compresses it um, if it's too loud so we will Turn the level up here on the input. Yep, there it is. I went that that is um, that particular one. I'm going plus 10 dB, which means that it's going up higher than the threshold is set for. So it will continue to knock it down to the best of its ability, so that this part never. Oop, it just flashed a little bit on overload, overload, overload. So the compressor is working. So we are sure that this thing is working. So our repair was correct, and we're done. Put it back in the box and put it back in service. One more thing we have to check, though, is output. Didn't check to make sure that there was actually anything coming out the back of it here. I'll tell you, one of the things, the hardest things to work on this is uh, getting the uh, getting all of these LEDs lined up to go through the holes. All right, so let's plug in the output back here. It's hooked up to a signal tracer. Ah, signal tracer, another antique, but you can hear it. So we have output. Let's see if the threshold will cut it down, and it does. Perfect. Let's check the uh, uh, low equalizer. 
there we go. Low equalizer is working. High, mid equalizer is working a lot. And the, uh, the high is not working too much because it's only 400 hertz. So that's not going to make a big difference. So we can say categorically that this thing is working the way it's supposed to. Thanks for watching.